Phosphate is a key substrate for bone mineralization and for structural components of the cell such as phospholipids. In addition, phosphate is an essential element of the energy pathways, oxygen transport and some enzymatic processes. It also plays an important role in the buffering of acid-base changes intracellularly and in the urine. By and large, it is an intracellular anion. Plasma phosphate is tightly controlled between 0.8 and 1.35 millimoles per litre in adults and 1.2 to 1.9 in children. 15% is protein bound, half is ionised and the remainder circulates complex with either calcium or magnesium. Control of phosphate excretion largely occurs at the distal nephron. It is reabsorbed up to the maximum rate, after which phosphate is wasted in the urine. This maximum is directly reduced by the action of parathyroid hormone, which enhances urinary phosphate loss. Hypophosphatemia stimulates renal tubular production of 1-alpha-hydroxylase. This enhances the conversion of vitamin D to the active dihydroxy form, which stimulates gastrointestinal absorption of calcium and phosphate. However, the increase in calcium results in inhibition of parathyroid hormone, resulting in renal loss of calcium and retention of phosphate. The net effect is to increase phosphate and have no change in calcium. Hypophosphatemia is defined as a fasting phosphate level less than 0.8 millimoles per litre. Hypophosphatemia is considered severe if levels drop below 0.3 and is associated with significant complications. A large list of causes exists. The more common causes include refeeding syndrome, haemofiltration, alkalosis, insulin therapy, DKA and catecholamine infusions. The management of hypophosphatemia is essentially supportive. In acute cases without evidence of complications, an expectant approach is possible. For example, an asthmatic who is on beta-adrenergic infusions and has a respiratory alkalosis may have negligible signs with a phosphate of 0.45 millimoles per litre. It would be expected that these changes will resolve as the underlying condition improves. In cases where total body phosphate is likely to be responsible, such as in DKA with renal losses, phosphate replacement becomes important. Treatment should aim to maintain phosphate levels greater than 0.8 millimoles per litre. Phosphate can be given IV or orally. In practice, it is given IV in most ICU patients. IV phosphate comes as sodium or potassium phosphate. It is usually recommended to be given at the rate of less than 5 millimoles per hour in adults, though rapid correction in the short term is reported to be well tolerated. High doses of potassium and sodium will be given with the phosphate and this should be borne in mind when prescribing phosphate. Large amounts of phosphate cannot be given with calcium as the two may complex, leading to potentially fatal complications. An alternate form of inorganic phosphate, such as glycerol phosphate, can be given if large doses of potassium or sodium are problematic or if calcium is being replaced. A phosphate higher than 1.6 millimoles per litre is considered significant and is a rare event in ICU. The cause is usually either reduced loss due to renal dysfunction or redistribution from intracellular stores. These can include trauma, rhabdomyolysis and tumour lysis. Other less common causes are shown here. 
Clinically, hypophosphatemia may result in acute tubular necrosis and ectopic calcification involving kidneys and eyes due to complexing with calcium. This also results in features of acute hypocalcemia. When treatment is required acutely, insulin dextrose or dextrose alone may be effective in driving phosphate into cells. Hemofiltration and dialysis are effective methods of removing high levels of phosphate in the medium term and oral phosphate binders may be required in chronic cases.